Hey guys, hi and welcome to the video. This video, I want to talk about multi-AZ or multi-region architecture uh, on AWS. So I'll be playing some videos and I'll try to give uh, most of the resources uh, down in the description where you can go read and learn more, right? So let's get started without wasting any further time. So, um, you know, Netflix and essentially Odd Zero, these are big companies that have already already you know been adopted these sort of architecture patterns right so i'll try to show you a netflix architecture here so allow me to play this welcome to this is my architect all big joined firms by have from you know, adopted a multi hey, hello. region thanks multi for joining me today now you guys do some pretty cool stuff. You know, I love sitting at home with the family watching Netflix all the time. Awesome. Uh, you're known for resilience. You're known for globalness. Now, I'm wearing the Chaos Monkey t-shirt here. I like it. What do you guys do when the monkeys get loose? Talk to us about some cool stuff you've been doing. That's right, yeah. When we have the big monkey unleashed, which means we have to evacuate a region, we have a relatively complex failover model, but it's based on a bunch of principles in the architecture where we try to simplify various dimensions, whether it's scaling or DNS, and that's what I was going to talk to you about today. Let's dive right in. Got something cool here. Yeah. So. When we think about you know, the tens of millions of devices active at a given time, and they're trying to talk in a Netflix, we simplify the model with very high level DNS records, right? And then we apply geo-routing that lets these individuals route to regions that are latency or for other reasons ideal for them, right? What we've done is we've leveraged Route 53, but at this level we have what we call virtual records. So you have our top level DNS record going down to what we call a virtual record. Mm -hmm. And this is where we steer traffic to mm -hmm. in a geo manner. Below that, we have the actual origin records, where people are going to talk to in the end, and those origin records are bound to ELBs. And we have maybe 50 distinct ELBs, and those farms themselves might be many hundreds of instances. In the process of doing failover, we have to differentially steer people around to avoid overloading the target region before it's scaled up. So you're not just banging a whole region's workload on another one, basically cascading the failure. It would just... Yeah. And we have to actually route some traffic <laughs> from in different ways. Yeah. So Virginia, part of it goes to Oregon, part of it goes to Dublin. Cool. Right? So what we've used is within Route 53, one thing that's very important to us is the ability to quickly change these records mm. for possibly hundreds of endpoints for devices. One of the benefits of Route 53 for us is we decouple the virtual from the origin. And the capability of Route 53 that's of greatest value to us is the support of many different types of alias records within your zone. Right? So when we fail over the region that's in a steady good, state, yeah. You have traffic coming here in your normal pattern and routing down to their origin and then routing down to the ELBs below that in some distributed way, yeah. right? And when it's time to fail over, our flow architecture actually starts to rebalance capacity. And then at some point, it actually goes in, repoints this record within Route 53 over to here. So most of our viewers will be yep. going, aha, but what about TTL? That's right. So one of the big benefits of Route 53 is that broad support of alias records, right? So alias records have two primary benefits for us. One is it lets us chain many sort of names together, and it avoids recursive queries. Without that, with many DNS providers, you're required to fall back on C names. C names put a lot more work on the DNS infrastructure, and as well, they have TTLs for every level. As you can imagine, we have many tens of thousands of devices that all treat TTL differently. So by being able to apply alias records, we have high-level TTLs somewhere up the stack, which are honored quite well. Yeah. But below the level, Absolutely. we don't have to worry about that. So you can change all that behavior. Exactly. In a matter of minutes, we flip over to another region. Um, and then when it's time to fail back, we don't have to maintain the state. Our architecture will actually go in and interrogate where the pointer is. So even if something goes wrong and we have to take longer, something might be changing in the rest of the state of the system. We just say, oh, it turns out the state we're in right now is we're sending traffic from US West 2 to US East 1. And we just do a repointer programmatically. So it's kind of a real-time state because you can handle whatever situation you're in. You don't have to kind of get it all nicely organized again. That's right. And when we run in our failover model, we have services running in each region. And the regions we're evacuating to are working in coordination and managing these independently, saying, I'm now ready. Bring that traffic to me. So it's a pool model of traffic. That's right. It's understanding how to flip it programmatically all from within the same service. Sensational. So we're talking intelligent traffic steering. We're talking about understanding the failure conditioning that's taking place and maintaining a streaming experience to me sitting at home in Melbourne. That's right, absolutely. I like it, Coburn Sensational Solution. Thanks for sharing. Yeah, no problem, great. Thank you for watching. This is So as you can see, right, uh, it was a very brilliant architecture, right? Uh, they're using Route 53. Another I wanna show you really quick, uh, this video on YouTube by building multi-region active active serverless backend. So um, he has a very nice article as well, where essentially, if I had to show you, 
what they do is essentially uh, when you deploy your API gateway and Lambda, which is one of the most popular stack that people are adopting, right? So essentially you create a domain name or, 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 or you know, you create a domain name, you deploy your uh, serverless application in that region, then essentially you deploy your application in another, another region. Then what you do is essentially you request for certificates for both. So let's say I'm deploying it in US East one, right? So I create, I go to AWS certificate manager, I assign it, a, 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 you know, a top level domain, then I assign it through. Um, so once that is done, then I can put the C name in route 53. So I link it together. Then uh, what I do in, when I go to the API gateway, I create a custom domain name. And then essentially um, that domain is gonna, you know, you gotta create a mapping essentially in route 53 with a type mapping where you're gonna point to the API gateway domain. So once that is set up in each region, then essentially you can set up routing patterns, which means whenever the traffic is coming, you can route 50% to region one, 50% to region two, and you can easily you know, uh, do the scaling, right? Uh, uh, very highly available is what I would use the word. Another, um, uh, as you can see on article on Cloud Guru is uh, build a serverless multi-region active active backend, right? The same thing, people opt this is one of the, I think, the famous stack, API Gateway, Lambda, and Dynamo. API Gateway, so essentially Dynamo has something called global tables, right? So easily you could opt in for that. You could create replicas. Then you could create DAX, right, to uh, speed up your Dynamo, right? Uh, so you could use that. And then essentially people, you know, dump their stuff on Route 53. Route 53 will essentially put it to the each of, based on the whatever what sort of routing you have set up it's gonna either invoke us east one or us west one whatever region you have set up or, or mumbai or you know essentially ireland wherever your application is right so when we talk about massive massive scale right it's extremely important to have a, an architecture that is highly available right if something fails automatically it can fail over to a different region it's very important right and um, I'm talking this, this is like a really massive, massive scale, right? Netflix, Auth0. Uh, so I saw a video of Auth0 as well. They are also using the same technique, right, to do that. But um, yeah, I personally wanna try this out during a weekend uh, project. So it would be really nice because AWS has given all the articles and links. So you can re really launch a stack here, right? Um, and, 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 you know, uh, prepare it. So as you can see, you can create APIs and then they have all the code given here, right? So I wanna try this out. It's gonna be, it should be a really fun project, maybe on some weekend, but I really wanted to show you all these articles that are available on the internet that you can read, read right? Um, then you can also come and read, uh, you know, come to this is my architecture and type multi-region. So the next architecture was by Auth0, uh, this one. So, you know, they are serving about 1.5 billion logins every month with, uh, you know, this architecture. So I just wanna show you, you know, they have Route 53, you know, they have the ELBs and, you know, further down the pipeline. So I'll leave all the links and material in the description. So if you wanna check that out, check that out, right? There's also for people who are using serverless, there is a plugin for multi-region. I haven't tried out yet, but I'm looking forward to maybe during some weekend project. I would love to try that out. So, I'm, so as you can see, serverless multi-region plugin, they, they have given some demos, right? Uh, they have given some source code as well, right? Uh, yeah, so these are all the materials that I'm gonna leave in the description. So if you are maybe uh, thinking or trying to adopt a multi-region architecture, I think this could be the one of the best stack, right? API Gateway, Lambdas, and Dynamo as the backend, global tables on that. Thank you so much for watching. I'll put all the links in the description. So if you get a chance, maybe take a look at it, right? Uh, thank you so much for watching and I would see you guys in the next video.